You'll have had your tea. The doings of Hamish and Dougal. Today, the murder mystery. Dougal! I'm very surprised to find you here. Oh, I just dropped in to pick up my pension and a book of stamps. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, oh, I just dropped in to ask them to turn down the music. <laughs> ah, thank you, Mrs. McAllister. Any time, big boy. <laughs> we only had it on to get rid of the mice. Now, look here. This letter has arrived for your cleaning lady, Mrs. Naughty. Perhaps you gents could deliver it for us, as we can't seem to find her. We can't help you there. Oh. We'd like to know what's become of her. We haven't seen her since she popped out last Tuesday. Uh, we averted our eyes, of uh, course. <laughs> and when we looked round, she was gone. Oh. Well, that's my kind of music, Mrs. McAllister. <laughs> but it's very worrying. Our houses are in a terrible mess since she went. The dust on the picture rail is knee deep. Aye. <laughs> I simply can't go on without a cleaning lady. I've got a pile of filthy laundry. No, it has to be a cleaning lady. Ah. <laughs> well, if you ask me, you're better off without her. Why? What can you mean, Mrs. M? Come under the counter for a moment, and I'll tell you. Oh, right. You were sure. Well, I'm not one to talk. Oh. <laughs> well, that was a waste of time, wasn't it? Right. But I will say this. Mrs. Naughty is no better than she ought to be. That woman is a man-eater. I can assure you she draws the line at that. <laughs> I've said enough. Very well. How much do I owe you? My lips are sealed. Well, it serves you right for licking those self-adhesive stamps. <laughs> I'll bid you good day. Good day. Go away. Oh, come in, you persistent bugger. No, I won't. Dougal! Hey, miss. You'll have had your tea. Yeah, well, no, I... You, you took your time coming in. There was a queue. Still no news of Mrs. Nochte? Apparently she was cited... Yes? ...in a divorce case in 1972. <laughs> the McAllister case. It's all come flooding back. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. <laughs> well, I get you the rubber poof. No, no. <laughs> the case, man. Doris McAllister... And our husband, the GP. Aye, a very small man. I remember. About five foot three, bald head, bushy ginger beard. And she hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> and you remember her husband, cruel eyes and a moustache like thunder. Name of Duncan. That's right, he called his moustache Duncan. <laughs> And he disappeared in mysterious circumstances during the court case. And Mrs. Nochte, or Nuss Nochte, as she was then, and Aye. we must now think of her, Aye. was named was named as the other woman. I never thought she had it in her. Oh, she did. They had photographs. <laughs> in fact, I ordered six of the large ones... And one for my wallet. Look! <laughs> Good. Look! Shames! Uh, Has it been touched up? Well, that's hard to tell from this. Thing. <laughs> Very fuzzy. What aperture were they using? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> so, 
Mrs. Nocty was old Dr. McAllister's nurse. Yes, and I remember there was talk at the time that she'd persuaded him to change his will, making her the sole beneficiary. <laughs> you remember the police tried to finger Mrs. Nocty? Oh, just boyish high spirits. <laughs> It's my belief the poor woman has run away from all the hurtful gossip. Where can she be? There's only one place she can be. Tonight, Hamish, we go camping on the moors. Well, that seems a bit callous when we should be looking for Mrs. Nocty. <laughs> but whatever you say... Hamish, stop making that silly noise. I'm sorry. It's not clever and it's not funny. It's much in demand at parties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like when you pull your trouser pockets out and do an impression of an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't the Freemasons' ladies' night. All right. <laughs> Very well. It's just so quiet here, out on the moor. It is, uh, camping out at night on the moor. Look up, Hamish, and tell me what you see. I see a clear night sky with a full moon and all the stars are shining, each one in its place, which tells me God's in his heaven and all's well with the world. Hamish, you're a dickhead. <laughs> We are in a tent. <laughs> it's impossible to see the stars at all. Oh, so it is. Unless, of course, somebody were to steal the tent. <laughs> steal the tent? Oh. <laughs> that would be the funniest joke in the world. <laughs> I'll take a peep. Well, nothing out of the ordinary. <laughs> Good. <laughs> now, let's look outside the tent. <laughs> oh, oh Misty me, look over there. It's a large glow-in-the-dark dog. No, wait. I recognize the hat. It's Mrs. Nochty. Come away home with us, woman. No, it's the gossip. The gossip. I've had it up to here. Aye, that's what they're saying. Uh. <laughs> but we're not at home to Mrs. Tittle-Tattle. No, no. Come away home and I'll put the kettle on. You know that always makes you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and incidentally, if it's elephant impressions you're after... Well, no, well <laughs> oh, you... But look here. Look here, the fog's coming down, Hamish. Come on and beware of the quicksands. After you, Mrs. Nochty. <laughs> right you are. Oh, big pardon. <laughs> Where are we? I cannot see a thing. Look! What? Look there ahead of us. What? It's the laird's big hoosh. Oh, he'll revive us with a hot toddy and a blazing row. <laughs> Hello. That's strange. Parked in the laird's driveway, Mrs. McAllister's one-seater tandem. <laughs> Mrs. McAllister, it's all falling into place. Well, that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> And there you have it, your lordship. Well, that is extraordinary. You'd swear it was an elephant. Now... <laughs> now, what are you doing here? Well, it's a long story. It all started many years ago when, as you'll recall, Dr. McAllister disappeared. Speak up, I can't hear you. <laughs> Well, uh, we are here to unravel the mystery. What, at this time of night? A 
that's a bonny clock you've got there. Yes, it's a traditional Bavarian yelping clock. <laughs> Been in the family for most of the afternoon. Ouch! Mrs. McAllister! Perhaps I can explain. Mrs. McAllister is here by way of being my current squeeze. But I see you know each other. I'll say we do. Go on, then. We do. <laughs> I won't ask what Mrs. McAllister was doing inside your clock. I think we've all got a pretty good idea. <laughs> oh, is that an elephant? No, it's a little party piece I've just learned. <laughs> oh, an African one, too. <laughs> your ladyship. We believe Mrs. McAllister was behind her husband's mysterious disappearance. And she spread the rumours that Mrs. Nochte was to blame. Well, Mrs. Nocht is here now to have it out with her, face to face. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. McAllister, what? You've made my life a misery. How can you say that? It isn't easy. <laughs> Who have besmirched my good name? Explain yourself. Let's hear what really happened to Dr. McAllister. He tried to end it all behind the cork. I found him hanging by the cloisters. An unusual way out for a medical man. <laughs> I cut him down, but he left me. Last I heard, he was living with a pole dancer in the Kyle of Butte. I can't remember his name. Dr. McAllister. That's it. Yes. <laughs> I admit I am Dr. McAllister. I took on the identity of the lad, my identical twin sister, to escape... <laughs> to escape Mrs. Nochte's attentions. Money changed hands, shallow grave, secret passage, birthmark. You know the sort of stuff. Well, there you have it. <laughs> Mystery solved. Drum major. <laughs> Well, him is your most happy outcome. Bottoms up. Is it? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't check in the mirror. Ah, well, here's mud in your eye. Oh, yeah. Right, down the hatch. Whoops! Oh! 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 Well, after that, I think we need a drink. Uh, <laughs> well, at last we're back to normal and no more mysteries, let's hope. There's one thing I don't understand, Inspector. Yes, sir? What's that? What are you doing here? <laughs> You'll have had your tea. The doings of Hamish and Doodle was written and performed by Barry Cryer and Graham Garden with Alison Stedman as Mrs. Nockley and Mrs. McAllister and Jeremy Hardy as the Laird. Instead of me. <laughs> Music was arranged by John Garden and performed by Claire McTaggart, Francis Dawling, Scott Hammond and Pete Rosser with assistance from the Banbury Pipe Band. The producer was John Naismith. 